Jesus, can we put those hands for Jesus? Hallelujah. Amen. Jehovah, born you, poor. He born you, Mary. He did a terror. In a champion, come Chine konye bere, chuku na zambanile, mama e e. Idye bube, idyo mimi, igwe sire tu kwa zombi. Ina chieze, igwe noa, eke ne burungu bara, oche zegi buruburu. Onu gidika, ebwe li gwe namba. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Please, can we be on our feet? Odi go ne gina ya na chi gwe noa o kaka o kaka heze ide bube. Ahagi, you really wait, you are. How do you go? Thank you for the provision. Let's thank you for the protections. Let's thank you for the church of God. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Oh, Majesty, we magnify your holy name. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We have come in humble adoration this morning. Thank you for bringing us. Thank you for bringing us. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. You don't have any right to ask if you have not given thanks. Open your mouth and thank God for the ones He have done. And the one is about to do, open your mouth and thank him for the protection, for the provisions. He has been guiding his people, he has been safeguarding us. Open your mouth and thank him for the church of God. Open your mouth and thank him. Oh, Majesty, we magnify your holy name. We magnify your holy name. There is none to be compared to your Majesty Jesus. We thank you, 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 we thank you. We have come, we have come. Say you receive all glory, all honor. For in Jesus, most mighty day we have prayed. Psalm 66, verse 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Let's open our mouth this morning and confess our sins before Him. Is there any way we have come short of the glory? 
Let's ask him to have mercy. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Majesty, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Remember the blood of Jesus. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. That our coming here this morning will not, will not be in vain. Open your mouth and ask him for his mercies. Open your mouth and ask him for his mercies. Blessed is he who says, I've forgiven. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Oh, Jesus, we glorify your holy name for forgiving us. We thank you. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us this morning. Have mercy upon us. May everything we are going to do be unto your glory. May our sins be remembered no more. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Oh, Jesus, have mercy upon us. For in Jesus' most powerful day we have prayed. We are going to be praying for yourself and for myself and for the entire church. We are the church workforce. The Bible says, do not be weary in well-doing, for at the due season we shall reap if we do not faint not. Open your mouth and ask God this morning, may I never be weary in this work. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Oh, Jesus, may I never be weary in this work. Help me, help me, help me, help me. May I never be weary. May I, may I never be weary. May I never be weary in this work. Help me. Improve my strength, Jesus. Improve my strength, Jesus. Help me, Lord. Improve my enthusiasm. Improve my passion. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. May I never be weary in this work. May I never be weary in this work. Help me, Spirit of the living God. Help me, help me, help me. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. May I never be weary. May there never be a time I'll be weary in this work. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Oh, Jesus, help me. Help me, help me, help me this morning. Help me this morning. Help me this morning. Help me, help me, help me. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Of the workforce that may there, may there never be a time there will be no unity in our workforce it brings a lot of setbacks open your mouth and pray oh lord let there be unity among us let there be unity among us open your mouth and make that your prayer open your mouth and make that your prayer oh jesus unite us unite us unite us unite us unite us open your mouth and make that your prayer open your mouth and make that your prayer unite us in your power unite us spirit of the living god May there never be a time that we say there is no unity among us. Unite us, unite us, bind us together, 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 bind us together. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. church workforce. When God blesses us, it will be very easy for us to work for him. You will not ask somebody to come for a workers meeting. The person will tell you, I have markets to sell. I have things to do. Open your mouth and pray for God's blessing upon us. Oh God, remember us. Bless your people. Bless your people that we will serve you the more. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Let your blessings come upon us. Let your blessings come upon us. Let us be at the forefront of your blessings. Sir. Let it be evidential. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. We need the blessings of the Lord. We need the blessings of the Lord. If people should come into the church and see that somebody that is at the door is a doctor, is a governor, is a senator. Oh, do you know how pleased that it will be in the heart of that person? Open your mouth and pray for the blessings of the Lord. Open your mouth and pray for the blessings of the Lord. Upon the church workforce. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Oh God, bless us. Sir. Bless us. Sir. Bless us. Sir. Let it be evidential. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Let it be evidential. Let it be evidential. Let it be evidential. Let it be evidential. In our time. Sir. Let your blessings come. 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 Bless us. Sir. Uplift us. Sir. Uplift us. Sir. Uplift us. Sir. Uplift us sir. 
Father, uplift us. Uh. Let us be on the top. Today we have prayed. Hold that person standing next to you. Hold somebody. They are going to be praying. Oh Lord, this is my brother I'm holding. This is my sister I'm holding. We will not fall. We will not fall. We will not fall. The target of the enemy is the church. We are going to be praying for that person you are holding. That the winds of doctrine, the winds of the enemy will not catch up with him or her. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Oh Father, this is my sister I'm holding. We will not fall. Uphold him, uphold her, uphold him, uphold her. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. This my sister I'm holding will not fall. Your fire shall be ten times better. Your fire shall be ten times better. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Pray for that person you are holding. The devices of the enemy will never come to pass upon your life. I drop the mic. The Bible speaking to us. Jesus said to Peter, I'll build my church upon the rock and the gates of hell will not prevail. This is the church of God. Open your heart and ask God, build your church upon the rock. Let the gates of hell not prevail over your church. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Lord Jesus, let your church be built on the rock. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. Build us upon the rock. Build the assemblies of God's church incredible upon the rock. Open your mouth and make that your prayer. For in Jesus' most powerful name, we have prayed. Is it possible? It's possible. Only send down thy glory. Just a pinch of it. This auditorium will not contain the people. If you cannot go, you pray. But we have to go out to evangelism. Let us open our mouths and begin to pray now that God will make it possible. For us to have 2,000 and above is possible. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Lord, we pray to you over this. Help us, O oh Lord. This church is one of the number one churches in Imo State. There is no way you go that you not hear Assemblies of God Church in Kenegu. Begin to pray. Ask God. Ask God. Jesus said to his disciples that they feel this right. But the laborers are few. The harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And Jesus said to his disciples, Now pray to God to send laborers. Begin to pray. He knows how he can send his laborers into the field that is already ripe. And you are one of those laborers. He will start with you. Don't ever close your mouth. Pray. Pray, pray, pray. Ask God to give you the strength. There are people who are there investing their time. They don't sleep. Always on their knees, they are praying. God, give me a soul. God, give me a soul. And every month, some of them are winning one soul. Every month, some of them two souls. Every month, some of them three. They have targets for themselves. What is our target? Begin to pray. Have you ever told somebody Jesus loves you? Even today, even this week, even last month, how many times have you gone out for evangelism? 
you have to pray. Ask God to help you. This place, good place for people to visit. We have great men of God in this place. We have programs in this place that when a soul comes here, that soul will not just go back empty. Pray. Open your mouth to pray. Pray. Not to pray. In Jesus' name, we are praying. You don't need to sit down. Stand up and let us pray. We just have a few minutes to go. As far as this prayer is concerned, stand up and pray. Pray that God will give you a strategy. God will give us the strategies as a church, as individuals, on how to go out winning souls. Father, we thank you this moment. We pray you know how to do it. Our goal is to make ourselves available. When we are available, God knows how he will put words in our mouth. God knows how he will lead our steps to where the people are. Don't ever assume that everybody in Oweri, everybody in Imo State is a Christian. No, we are making that mistake. Even around us in Ikeneku here, there are people who don't know Jesus. There are people who don't have Jesus in their lives. We need to talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, wherever they are, in their corners, in their homes. Hey, we need to pray. We need to pray. Lord, encourage us. Lord, steer us up. Lord, help us out. Lord, give us the courage to go out. Lord, we need the wisdom to go out. Lord, we need the boldness to go out. Lord, we need the strategies. But when we yield to you, you know how to do it. Father, and let me tell us that this evangelism we are talking about, winning souls, is our primary goal as Christians. If you cannot win a soul, then you are not supposed to live as a child of God. That is the heartbeat of God. Lord, I pray, oh Lord, that we always be on the go. We always be on the go. In that bus, Imo, have you talked to somebody about Jesus? In that your market corner, have you talked to somebody about Jesus? In the compound where you live, on the street, in the school where you teach, Lord, we need to talk to people. And not just talking to people to accept Jesus. Let us tell them about what is happening in Ikenegu Church. Let us tell them what is happening in Assembly of God Church. Let us be proud and bold to talk about our church. Let's not tell stories about other churches. Lord, I pray for God. Give us the wisdom. Give us the boldness. We pray for God. Whatever it is that has been an obstacle on our ways, not to go out. Lord, we pray. Even today, Saturday, we'll be going out at MCC Junction by Wedra. By 3 p.m., everybody is supposed to be there. Imagine this few number that is here. We march out and stand at MCC and begin to pray and praise God and they identify us as a service of God people. Imagine what will happen. Lord, we pray, oh God, help us never to keep quiet. In Jesus' name, Jeremiah said, I am tired, I am weak. I don't want to do the work of God again. The pressure from people, the attacks from people. He wanted to go back to relax. But he said, no, I cannot go back to relax. There is fire of God burning in my bones. How can I go to relax? Do you have that fire? If you don't have it, let God steal up that fire in you. Father, I pray. Pray that God should steal up fire in your bones. So that you don't feel comfortable to relax. Whenever, you know, it is time for you to go out to minister. Father, put your fire in our bones. Put your fire in our bones. Put your fire in our hearts. Steer us up in the name of Jesus. Steer us up to go out in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mightiest name we have prayed. In Jesus' mightiest name we have prayed. The evangelism we are talking about, winning of souls we are talking about, we are going to pray for our members. Look very carefully. Some of our members, many of them, they are no longer attending church again. They are no more coming to church. Some of them stay back at home when it is Sunday. Some even during Sunday school, they don't come out again. Let us pray that God will solve their problems. God will meet their needs. God will steer them up again to come. Let the evangelism start from our homes. Begin to pray now. Father, we pray. We pray for our own Jerusalem. We pray for our own constituency. Assemblies of God, Church in Kenego. So many of
of our members? Could it be sickness? Hardship? Could it be weariness? I don't know. Let us pray that even right now, God will touch them wherever they are. Touch your people. Bless them. Those who are facing hardship. Everybody is facing hardship. We are not exempted. But Lord, touch them. Those that are sick, are they at home? In the hospital? Wherever they are, Lord, heal them. Heal them. Heal them. Touch them, oh Lord. Revive them again. Revive them again. Revive them again. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And finally, those of us who are here, let us pray. It is left two months plus for this year, you know, to come to, to an end. We are going to pray. A target has been set before us. Ten months gone by. We will pray and we are going to sit up. You don't know that Christianity is networking. We are going to do networking. And we pray that God should help us. That from this moment as we leave this place, we will never close our mouth again. Till December 25th, till December 31st, as we cross over to 2025, it will become our own pattern, our lifestyle, that we shall no longer close our mouth until death closes our mouth in grief. Let us open our mouth to pray. Lord, we pray, O oh God, give us the joy to go out winning souls. We pray, O oh God, because that is your joy, that the heaven, the entire heaven, will be happy, will be full of joy when a soul is turned into the kingdom of God. Lord, we pray this moment to God that we shall no longer close our mouth. We shall no longer close our mouth. We have closed our mouth for too long. It's remaining only two months to go, and it is possible. We are here this October Kingdom Enlargement Campaign. It is starting tomorrow, being first Sunday. As we go, we'll be talking about October Enlargement Campaign. We'll be telling people, we'll be teaching people. We will go mad inviting people on the streets where we live. Wherever we go today, in the market square, wherever we go today in our homes, on the streets where we live, we'll be inviting people. We'll be telling them about the goodness of the Lord. What is happening in our church here? Lord, let us be bold. Let us be proud to talk about Assemblies of God Church in Kenegu. Have any other church? This is our church. This is everything that concerns us. Father, I pray we shall not shy away. In Jesus' name, we pray. Father, we break the yokes of sin. Is this sin? Is this death fright? What is it that is keeping us bound from going out to evangelize? I pray today that that yoke is broken in the name of Jesus. That yoke is broken in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Still in the mood of prayer, in the spirit of prayer, wherever you are, lift up your voice. We are going to be praying for October Enlargement Campaign. But before we do that, we are going to be thanking God for the success of 2023. October Enlargement Campaign. The Lord help us thus far. Lift up your hands, lift up your voice wherever you are and begin to appreciate God for the success of last year October Enlargement Campaign. It wasn't easy but God did it wherever you are. Lift up your voice, lift up your voice and begin to appreciate God. If you can pray the Holy Ghost, you can do it right now. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice up. Let's worship him in the spirit. The Bible said God is spirit and dead that must worship him. Must worship him in spirit and in truth. Lift your voice. Let's worship him. Lord, we give it the glory. We give it the glory. Yes, no, no, no. In the name of Jesus, we'll be praying for October Enlargement Campaign 2024. We are going to be praying that this year's Enlargement Campaign will be exceptional. We are going to be praying that the Holy Ghost will take over beginning from tomorrow through the last Sunday of October. Let the Holy Ghost take over. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Let the Holy Ghost take over. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, 
Saba, Beli, Atori, and Asina, Baba. Holy Ghost, we ask that you take over. Beginning from tomorrow, all corner. Let the Holy Ghost walk around the service. Let the power of God be dispensed. Let Jesus be revealed. And let Jesus be glorified. Are you praying? Let the power of God be dispensed. Sacred has been given to us in finance and in souls. We are going to be praying and asking God for the grace to reach our target this year. The Lord did it for us last year. If God did it for us last year, He can do it again for us this year. He can do it for us. Begin to pray, oh God, help us to reach our target. The target that has been given to us. Jesus said, I must walk the walk of Him that has sent me. While it is day, the night that coming, when no man can walk, Lord will receive the grace. Jesus. Little boys and pray. Lord, we will raise our target. It is possible. The Bible said all things are possible to him that believe. Lord, we believe it will be possible. It is a possibility. We can do it. Paul said, I can do all things. All things. Lord, in souls, we will raise our target. In finance, we will raise our target. And nothing can stop us. Are you praying already? If you can pray in the Holy Ghost, oh yeah, go ahead. Power, 
We are going to pray for yourself. Most times when this time comes, you see a lot of believers, a lot of people, they, they will panic. They will be afraid. Of, oh, I cannot make it. Oh, you see a lot of people falling away. We are going to be praying, asking God that the Lord will strengthen us in this month of enlargement campaign. Lord, I receive strength. I receive grace. I receive strength. Nothing will shake me. I will not be sick. I will not lack. Are you praying already? Ayakate. I rebuild the spirit of sickness upon our members. The spirit of lack. We rebuild you. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Rob me, I see a twine. 
Kapara. Jesus we pray. Still in the mood of prayer, we are going to pray for send down thy glory. Let's begin to appreciate God for last year's send down thy glory. Open your mouth and begin to appreciate him for how he led us last year. Praise him because he is worthy. It is only him that made it possible. Let's appreciate him for all the people, all the souls that were won, for the miracles that were done, for the servants he used, for the singers, everybody. Let's begin to appreciate God. In the name of Jesus, we have worshipped. Let's now begin to pray for this year's Send Down Thy Glory. Let's begin to pray for the venue of the Send Down Thy Glory. Let us ask that God will give us a place, not just giving us a place, that he will begin now to saturate the whole of that place with his glory. Let's open our mouths and pray. Father, we as that God will saturate that place with his glory. Let his presence go before us, even before when the, the date of the send down thy glory. Let his presence fill the whole of that place, just as the waters cover the sea. In Jesus' name we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Now I want us to begin to lift before God everyone that has been invited for that program. All the ones who will minister. Let's ask that God will begin now to equip them. Let God begin to prepare them beforehand. That on that day as they open their mouths to sing, that his glory will come down. Let's pray that none of them will fall sick, that none of them will lose their voice, that nothing will happen to them. They will all come on that day and they will perform as the Spirit of God leads them. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let us also pray, committing into God's hands all the committees of send down thy glory. Let's lift up every committee, every member of the committees, that God will grant them the unction to function. Let us pray. Lord, we pray, committing all the committees, the works committee, the finance committee, everyone that God will use, that he will begin now to prepare them. Let us
In Jesus' name we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Let us lift up before God all the people that will come for send down thy glory. Wherever they are, from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south, that God will begin to prepare their hearts and draw them on that day. That there will not be enough room to contain the people that will come. Let us pray. And as they come, that God will arrest them. Let it not just be a jamboree, but let them encounter the power of God. Let's open our mouths and pray. As we pray for those that will come physically, let us also pray for those who will be watching online that they will have an encounter on that day. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let us also pray, let us lift up the servant of God that he's going to use on that day. Let us pray for the unction to function. The word of God says that when the disciples preached the gospel, that there was great power that accompanied them and many miracles took place. Signs and wonders followed. Let us pray that as God's servant will minister on that day, that God will equip him. That the, he will not speak his own words, but the words that God will put in his mouth. And as the word will come forth, that signs and wonders will follow. That men and women will be drawn unto salvation. That people will, with all manner of burdens, that they will they'll be healed. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We are going to ask God. This year, send down thy glory will not be business as usual. We are going to ask that he will give us souls that will abide. Whenever we have some, uh, send down thy glory, you see a multitude of people who will come to give their lives to Christ. And at the end of the day, they go back. Let us ask that God will give us souls that will abide. Let's open our mouths and pray. Nes <laughs> In Jesus' name we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Let us ask that God will bring money for this send down thy glory. Send down thy glory requires so much money. As you are spending, you see that more reasons to spend money will be coming. Let us ask that God, that he knows the fish that carries the money. Let him give it to us. Let wherever the money may be, 
let him bring it. So that we will do this work and his name will be glorified. Let us ask that God will begin to bless our pockets, bless touch the hearts of men and women to freely give for this program. Let's open our mouths and pray. God of provision. Jehovah Jireh. Sola parado shatani meredes, irado shatani meredes kade. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let us also pray, asking that God will take charge of that day. Let us pray that as many as will travel from any part of Nigeria for send down thy glory, that God will grant them journey mercies. Let us pray that there will be no casualties. Even that period that is uh, December, uh, towards Christmas and all that. Let us ask that God will keep everyone safe. Nobody will come to that place and there will be any problem. There shall be no stampede. There shall be no accident. There shall be no casualty. Let's open our mouths and pray. We plan of the enemy we cast. Oye de baro shana mani se tali ke peliza. Oye de rado shata la barakade se tali. Zodi 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 ya tamaro shedegede. Shata peleke tosi kalabado sanana. Rani Bali Kalabad O Shatala Ke Perede Zedia Ro Shatam Eli Do Zada In the name of Jesus we pray Amen Giving glory to the Lord He reigns Giving glory to the Lord He reigns he reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Oh, giving glory to the Lord. He reigns. Hallelujah. Giving glory to the Lord. He reigns. Giving glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Hallelujah. Give it glory to the Lord. He reigns. Give it glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Oh, give it glory to the Lord. May God answer our prayers in Jesus' name. All right. If there are people who should be obedient, it should be church workers. If you came in and you didn't sit where the usher asked you to sit, that is not proper. We don't want those people sitting outside when there are empty seats here. So please just move up and fill up the front, any empty seats in front of you. Just be obedient. And do that, you are a church worker. Our time is 10 o'clock, in fact, it was supposed to be 9. And so, we're not waiting for anybody. I want to appreciate those of you who are here. 
want to take the first shot. And our guest speakers are already here seated. So may I invite the first guest speaker in the next 30 minutes to come and share with us the 21st century church worker. Let's welcome to the microphone our brother Nadis Nandi Ume to please come. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hello. Dear of heaven, fall on my testy soul. Think. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Dear of heaven, fall on my testy soul. Dear of heaven, fall on me. Blessed Holy Spirit, come and take full control. Dear of heaven, Fall on me, fall on me, fall on my testy soul, dear of heaven, fall on me, blessed Holy Spirit, come and take full control. Dear of heaven, fall on me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Are you happy to be here? You are happy. I want to especially appreciate the senior pastor of the church, the assistant pastor, the church board members that made it possible for me to take, take this topic, the 20 first century church worker. Somebody say the 21st century church worker. I can't hear you. Okay, let's say it like this. The 21 CCW. Somebody say the 21 CCW. So I might not want to repeat that word, the 21st century church worker. So when I say the 21 CCW, you understand what I mean? Okay? Okay. Praise the Lord. Men and brethren, um, we, we know we are in the 21st century. And already we are 24 years into the 21st century. Remaining how many years? How many years do we have left to the end of the 21st century? Hello? I can't hear you. We have 76 years left in the 21st century. And every, 20, every century comes with what? A peculiar challenge. Comes with its own challenge. Every century comes with one problem or the other. This problem affects nations, affects uh, com companies, affects families, affects the church. So we don't fold our hands and just accept what the century brings. And the most recent one is what? The COVID-19. We just came out of the COVID era. And this COVID era really changed a lot of things for us. It really turned things around in society. The COVID era really caused pains, tears. And some people also cashed out during COVID, true or false? So now the question is, the church also has been affected by this COVID, this COVID both uh, the COVID and post-COVID. The way we do things has really changed. The way things are done have changed. And we really need to do what? We need to stand up. We need to change our position. We need to change our orientation. We need to change our mindset. We need to 
improve ourselves to be able to fit in into what we now found ourselves, into our now reality. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So the church will not stand by and watch the enemy take advantage of what COVID did to us. Do you know that a lot of churches were shut down as a result of COVID? A lot of churches were shut down. But the church will not fold its hands. All of us sitting here today, we are the foot soldiers of this house. We are the engine room of this church. And we know that the church, the pastor, the leaders of this church cannot perform effectively without you, without me. They cannot perform effectively. So if I may ask, who actually is a church worker? Who is a church worker? Now, for you to be able to navigate through the terrain of the post-COVID era, there are certain characteristics you need to develop, you need to put in place, you need to adapt to, you need to learn to help you successfully navigate through this post-COVID era. Praise the Lord. Now I'm going to ask, who, first of all, who is a church worker? I need somebody from the audience to help me. I need a feedback microphone, please. Who is a church worker? Can somebody quickly help us? Audience, I'm waiting for you. Please, if you know the answer, just raise your hand, please. If you have an answer, raise your hand. I can see a hand, please. Help me with the microphone. Who is a church worker? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I would say a church worker is a person who renders his or her services in the vineyard of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we put our hands together for her? Any other answer? Okay. Okay. By my definition, okay. somebody else? Okay. I want to say that every member of the church is a church worker beginning from the pulpit to the pews. Everybody is a church worker. Thank you, sir. I think I saw that hand there. That the, that the okay. okay. Praise God. I would say that a church worker is a born-again child of God who has volunteered himself to serve in the house of God in the capacity God has directed him. God bless you, sir. Somebody say volunteer. Volunteer. Okay, can we see Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 11? Second Timothy four eleven. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. Somebody say useful. Useful. A church worker must be useful. For the fact that you are an usher does not make you a church worker. For the fact that you are a security man in the church does not make you a church worker. For the fact that you are in the band or media does not make you a church worker. You must be what? You must be useful. Useful. You must be useful. If you are not useful, you are not a church worker. And that translation says, he, must, he was profitable. Only he was profitable. So you must be profitable. You must be profitable to the leadership, to the authority. Then, now, my, my own de de definition for a church worker is the ch church worker is a believer in whom the Christian character is visibly evident. A believer in whom the Christian character is visibly evident. 
when people look at you, they see Christ. When you speak, people see Christ. When you act, people see Christ. When you write, people see Christ. Any movement you make in your life, people see Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So no matter the office you occupy in church, if you are unprofitable, you are not a church worker. Also, a church worker can also, also be seen and described as the foot soldier of the church. One that will not create pain and tension or distract the man of God from effective service. Do you know that a church worker can create pain? A church worker can create tension by either fighting in the church, let's say you are in the band, and there's a, there's a disagreement, and people begin to fight. That's a distraction. True or false? That's a very big distraction. So, a church worker must be highly disciplined. A church worker is supposed to be a helper of the vision of the leader. They are supposed to be a helper of the vision. That means you are useful. A church worker is not focused on what he will get. A church worker is not focused on what, what's in it for me. Like in our society today, when you go out for, um, to apply for a contract, you meet all these politicians. For you to get their attention, you have to tell, it, tell them what's in that project for them. That's what they are after. If you bring a very long proposal, what they are looking at is what? The total. Inside this total, how much is my own? That's all they, they want to know. Whether you do the project or not, it's not their business. How much is my own? What is my cut? Somebody will give you a contract and will say, what is my cut? Even people that call themselves church workers in church, they do it. Many do it. They will give a contract and they want to do what? Receive a cut. May God help us in Jesus' name. May God help us in Jesus' name. A church worker is focused on what he will give, not what he will get. With this mindset, you will not be a grumbler or become antagonistic. You know, there are people that everything the pastor does, everything the leader does, they will find fault. And they are workers. They claim to be workers. They claim to be in the engine room of the church. They will murmur. They will complain. They will backbite. And they say they are workers. They are pulling down God's work. And such a person is not profitable. A church worker is not selective, but takes ownership. Takes ownership. I will not say because I am in the band and I see something wrong around the band area, I will not help to correct it. Because I'm not in the choir and I see something wrong in the choir area, I will not help to correct it. Because I'm not in the security, I will see something in the security area that is going wrong and I will just fold my hands or look away. Praise the Lord. So, you have to take ownership. What does it mean to take ownership? Taking the office or the position as if it is yours. Being intentional about what you are doing. Taking things personally. I don't know if you have seen some people in some offices, the way they work. People will ask them, ah, this is what you are doing like this. Is it your father's job? Is it your father's business? Yes. It's your father's business. That is an excellent mindset. For you to excel in any organization, you need to take ownership. It makes you stand out and it makes you rise fast. Praise the Lord. Now, the Christian worker, the CC, the 21 CCW, needs to put up, put up some characteristics. The 21st century church worker needs to put up some characteristics. There are some features you need to put up. There are some things that should be found in you. There are some attributes, some things you need to reflect when people see you. They quickly see it. Praise the Lord. First of all, as a church worker, you need to be a team player. A team player. Can somebody help me read 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20 to 21? 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy 2, 20 to 21. 
But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. 21. 21. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the letter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the master, preferred, prepared for every good work. Praise the Lord. It says, in a great house, there are many vessels. I don't care if you are a vessel of gold. I don't care if, if you are a vessel of silver. I don't care if you are a vessel of sand or whatever. But what value do you carry? I don't care about your makeup, where you're coming from. But the question is, are you sanctified? Are you sanctified? It doesn't matter if you are gold or silver or diamond or whatever. But you have to be what? Sanctified to be useful in God's house. If you are not sanctified, you not, if you are not sanctified, you will not be useful. So you have to be a team player, like I said. You see that there are vessels of gold in this place. There are vessels of silver and clay and all whatnot. So these are different teams, different attributes. So for you to be a, a, an effective 21st century church worker, you have to be able to align with people. People with different backgrounds, people with different understanding, people with different exposures, people with different characters. Praise the Lord. You must be a good, a good team player. Thus, having the ability to work with different categories of people in order to accomplish the kingdom tax. Working effectively as a team brings the power of synergy into play. If we work as a team, like when the builders of the Tower of Babel, when they were building, God looked and said, because they are united, because they, had, they have one voice, there is nothing they aspire, they aspire to do that they will not achieve. Praise the Lord. So we need to develop synergy as a team player. Who can tell me what, is, what synergy stands for? Who can tell us what synergy is? What is synergy? Can I see your hand? If you have an answer. There's a hand there, please. Synergy simply means cooperation, cooperating together to achieve a goal. Cooperation. That's beautiful. Any other answer? All right. I wanted to say, you know, harnessing and then bonding together, coming together like he has said. You know, putting your forces together. Thank you, sir. Okay, the dictionary tells us that synergy is the combined power of the combined power of group of things when they are working together. That is greater than the total power achieved by each each working separately. Now, let's say brother Oge and brother Emeka. There, there, there's a task you give to brother Oge. He will struggle to do it. And that same task you give it to brother Emeka, he will struggle to do it. If you triple that task or increase that task by four and ask the two of them to handle it, you will see they are able to execute it. Okay, now let's see the Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 30. The Bible talks about synergy there. Deuteronomy 32, 30. How could one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to flight unless they are rock had sold them, and the Lord has surrendered them. Praise the Lord. Bible says one will chase a thousand, and two will chase ten thousand. Does it make sense? It does not make sense. It does not make sense. If one will chase a thousand, ordinarily, two should chase what? Two thousand. Two of us. So where does the extra power come from? Synergy. Synergy is and a kind of unseen power. So let's see Genesis chapter 11 verse 6. 
Genesis 11, verse 6. Genesis 11, 6. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one, and they all have one language. And this is what they begin to do. Now, nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. Now, if you walk as a single person, if you walk individually, you walk on your own, you not go far. But when you walk as a team, you walk further and you walk faster. Let us see an illustration. Can I see the horse illustration? Dying sport, but I know there are young people out there somewhere. I just personally haven't had them. He's struggling to move the load. Now let us see the second horse. Two horses. Two horses. It's that load multiplied into eight. Does he how easily they're moving? Power of synergy. So where did the extra strength come from? Where did the extra power come from? Synergy. So we need to for us to be able to work effectively as a team, we need to do what? Have synergy. We need to synergize. We need to operate. We need to put our acts together. Praise the Lord. So, in essence, if you see yourself in a team, if you see yourself as the only best, progress cannot be achieved. In any team where one person sees himself as what? As the only best. It's only you. Uh, without me, nothing will move in this church. I'm the one that is controlling this church. I'm the one that is doing this. I'm the one that is doing that. Progress cannot be achieved. So you have to zero your mind. You have to zero your mind to work as a team, to work with people, to, to, to mix up with people, to synergize with people, to be able to get greater results. And that characteristics that the 21st, 21 CCW should put on is impact somebody say impact impact okay sorry i wanted to show us another video on the previous um and that's the video of the ants the insignificant leftover food scraps that we humans unknowingly leave behind after a quick bite on the go could actually be a massive bountiful feast to other creatures like ants Nobody this week, I was able to watch the most amazing process of how a wild ant colony brings home a bunch of breadcrumbs left laying around in my yard. And the ants I watched weren't just any wild ant colony. These were marauder ants, undisputedly some of the coolest ants on the planet. Don't just be a worker, but be an impactful worker. Somebody say impactful worker. Impactful worker. Be a worker with a difference, such that when somebody comes to this church and encounters you, probably meets me or you or any of us, the person would do what? Have an experience. And the experience the person lives with is will make a strong impact, a strong impression in the person's mind. And that impact or experience will determine if the person will stay or will leave. Become a trailblazer wherever you function. Make sure you leave a trail such that any day you do not come to church, the pastor will notice. Your team leader will notice. Create a trail. Create a track record. Praise the Lord. Remember, your impact will also be what? Negative or positive. So, when you are making impact, ask yourself, what kind of impact am I making? Am I making a positive impact or am I making a negative impact? Some of us church workers, we are busy making negative impact. Impact, sapping the energy of the leadership, sapping the energy of the pastor. May God help us in Jesus' name. You will never have the second chance to make a first impression. Most times when people encounter you, the first impression you make leaves that lasting impact leaves that lasting impression in their mind. Praise the Lord. So let us be very conscious as a 21st century church worker to learn how to make what? A, a lasting impression. Praise the Lord. 
Also, under attributes or characteristics that a 21 CCW should put up is teachable, teachability. You need to have a teachable spirit. Somebody say teachable spirit. Teachable. No matter what you think you know. There's one saying, saying that says, what you know, you know. What you don't know, you don't know. True of us. There are things I know that you don't know. There are things you know that I don't know. That is why it's important for us to be what? Open to learning. As a 21st century church worker, you have to be willing, zero your mind, no matter what you know already, no matter where you're coming from, zero your mind. Be ready to unlearn. Be ready to learn and be ready to relearn. Somebody say, unlearn. Learn and relearn. Unlearn, learn and relearn. Okay, now, there's a story told about a boy. He went fishing with his friend. So when he went for fishing, he went with a particular size of ruler or wood. So any fish he catches, he will measure it with the ruler. If the fish is longer than the ruler, he will throw it back into the water. If the fish is the length of the ruler or smaller, he put it in his bucket. So his friend was observing with a keen interest. I asked him, why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? Why are you throwing back the big fishes and taking the ones that are smaller than the ruler? He said, that is how my father did it. Somebody said, that is how my father did it. Ah, the friend was not satisfied. He said, that is not a good answer. Let's go and ask your father. They now went and asked the boy's father. Your son, I went, I went out fishing with your son and he was catching fishes. Every big fish he caught, he threw back into the river. But the small fish that was the length of the ruler, or smaller than the ruler, he put in the bucket. So I asked him why he did it. He said, that was how you did it. So, daddy, can you tell us why you, did, you transfer this kind of knowledge to your son? The father said, that was how my grandfather did it. So, um, fortunately enough, the grandfather was still alive. They went to meet the grandfather. The grandfather said, yes, that the frying pan he had in his house was the length of that ruler. So, he doesn't want if any fish that he will catch that will not size the frying pan. So, most times, we just copy things. We do things without trying to learn, without trying to understand the mystery behind what we are doing. Praise the Lord. So we need to open our mind to what? Learning. The 21st century church worker must be open to learning because in today's world, you need a good knowledge of digital skills to function effectively. Someone say digital skills. You need a very good knowledge of digital skills. A very good knowledge of it because the world, the world has gone digital. The, post, the COVID made everybody shift to digital. Everybody. In fact, if you are not in the digital, you are just like somebody not in the dark. So we need to learn digital skills. There are so many tools out there. And for you to be able to do this, you need to leave your comfort zone. You have to go the extra mile to acquire knowledge to learn how to engage on the internet, to learn about artificial intelligence, to learn about social media. Praise the Lord. Because the church worker, our basic mandate is to, to, to depopulate hell and populate God's kingdom. A prediction says that by 2025, AI will take over 80% of content that we see online. So, if I will ask you, how many of you today have checked, um, I believe we all have smartphones. How many of you today have checked your WhatsApp today? You have checked your phone. You have opened your WhatsApp today on your phone. Let me see your hand. It's not a sin now. Ah. How many of you have checked your WhatsApp today? I want to see. Uh, no, I don't know WhatsApp on the phone, no, no. You know, get? How do you come disappointed, though? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, um, how many of you have checked your social media? Apart from WhatsApp, you have checked Facebook or you've checked Instagram today. God bless you. Okay, how many of you have visited the church social media page for the past 24 hours? 
the past 25 hours, you have, you have visited our page. Very few. Are we doing well? Okay, now, for those of you that have visited the page, the past 25 hours, you have liked or commented or shared. Let me see your hand. One, two, three, four, five. Only five people. And we say we are the church workers. We say we are the engine room of the church. Brethren, at this pace, at this pace, we cannot make, make much progress. At this pace, we cannot move fast. Because the digital space is, is the new normal where everything is happening. So the church worker should not be left out. Praise the Lord. We all need to wake up. We all need to wake up and become useful. In this area, we need to be very, very useful. We need to be very intentional about it. If not, our impact will be very, very light. Okay, now everybody bring out your phone. Bring out your smartphone, please. Help me go to Google and search for Assemblies of God Church in the way. Assemblies of God Church is in the way. How many of you are doing that? Search for Assemblies of God Churches in the way. Are we there? If you are there, let me see your hand. Let me see your hand if, if you are already there. Okay, please um, help me with the microphone, please. Just go to, go to Google, open your browser, type Google. Or just, just go to your browser and type Assemblies of God Churches in a way. Your browser will automatically search and give you results. Where's the microphone, please? Okay. Somebody's here. Give me mic. Okay, bro, okay, what, what do you see? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The first thing here is the locations, the Google map. And it gives us addresses of Assemblies of God churches in Oweri. The first one here is Assemblies of God. 11 Act Deacon Dennis. Can we put our hands together for ourselves? The first, I said the first. Clap now. Uh, uh, clap. People are not clapping, no. Praise God. The second one is uh, 44 Royce. The third one is number 10. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Okay, but, okay still hold the mic. Help me search for. Okay, are we doing well? By that result, are we doing well? Google, Google listed us free of charge. We did not pay them to list us as number one. Number one assembly of God Church in Oweri. Now, bro, okay, search for top ten churches in Oweri. Top ten churches in Oweri. Let's know what you see, sir. Praise the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. I can see Holy Ghost, uh, Holy Cross Catholic Church first. I can see Living Faith Church worldwide, followed by the Brook Church on places. Then I'm the best for, okay. Is that what you want, sir? Okay. Okay, now he has mentioned four churches. Yes. Do you hear Assemblies of God there? No. Are we doing well? Are we doing well? We need to sit up. Tell your neighbor, sit up. Sit up. We Bro, cannot can achieve. Up. We cannot achieve it. We cannot achieve that progress without you. You cannot leave this work alone for the pastor. The pastor alone cannot do it. There's a limit to what the pastor can do. There's a limit to what the deacons can do. There's a limit to what the leadership of the church can do. All hands need to be on the deck. Everybody needs to be involved. Praise the Lord. The internet and social media is so vast that no one individual knows it all. When we give ourselves to learning, we become more profitable to the church and make the leader's work easier. True or false? And we have to learn to stop using 20th century mindset to function in the 21st century. Now, 
not knowing how to use social media, I'm talking to all of us now, is like a missionary moving into a country and refusing to learn the language. Social media is the language of the now. Social media is the language of today. Do you know how Facebook has over 2.7 billion subscribers? There are 2.7 billion people on Facebook. And Instagram has over 1 billion people. And these two, these two applications is owned by one company, Meta. So approximately, approximately we have about 4 billion people on Instagram and Facebook. And I think this is the single largest mission field the church has ever witnessed, true of us. This is the single largest mission field the church has ever witnessed. And we are folding our hands. We are folding our hands. So we need to, the 21 CCW needs to wake up. Every 21 CCW needs to wake up. For those that are just joining us, 21 CCW means 21st century church worker. Every 21 CCW needs to do what? Need to wake up. Need to learn. Need to fit in. Every 21 CC worker should understand this new mission field and acquire the skills needed to partake in the harvest of souls. To function effectively as a 21 CCW, we must let go of who we are in order to make room for who we are becoming. This can be extremely uncomfortable because the human brain is wired to resist change. Our brain is wired to re either resist or reject change. Praise the Lord. Under characteristics that the 21 CCW needs to put up is you have to be systematic and method methodical. Someone says systematic and methodical. A 21 CCW fellow, I'm going to rush now because I've been giving a few minutes to round off. A 21 CCW w must follow system, system, pl systems, plans, and protocols to achieve the ministry goals. Do you know that every pilot, before a pilot takes off to fly, they go through what they call checklists. It doesn't matter if you have flown from Owere to Abuja a hundred times that day. Each flight, you have to go through the same checklist. It's a must. You have to go through that checklist. Praise the Lord. So don't think you know it all. You need to learn. You need to, be, you need to follow systems. You need to follow methods. You need to follow lay down principles to be able to achieve the goal of the church. Just like, just like companies design content calendars, to guide their outreach for the entire year. Or like the pilot that has to repeat a set of protocols. No matter how familiar you think you are with those protocols. So now, our follow-up strategy needs to be effective and time-proven. You know, there are some churches in Oweri. I think one brother was sharing with me. There was a church he attended in Oweri. They took his birthday, his address, his phone number, his email, and they keep bombarding him every day. They kept on bombarding him every day. He said, if not for one thing, he would have left this church. That is, people that know how to use social media, people that know how to use the, the digital skills effectively. So we have to be very, very strategic. We have to be very, very systematic in our approach. Praise the Lord. We very well need to understand the generation of people we are exposed to on a daily basis. Because this is another challenge we are having. The way I handle Mr. A and Mr. B and Mr. C can never be the same thing. Because in today's workforce, we have different generations that make up today's workforce. We have people called the baby boomers. Baby boomers are people that are born between 1946 and 1964. Can somebody help me do the calculation? 64 minus 46, what do you have? 64, 19, 19, 1964 minus 1946. So, 18 years. Okay, people that, people that were born within this year are called baby boomers. 
Then people that are born between 1965 and 1980 are called Gen, Gen X or Generation X. Then people that are born between 1981 and 1994 are called Generation Y or the Millennials. Then the very popular one is the Gen Z. How many of us hear about Gen Z everywhere, all over social media? You see Gen Z, Gen Z, Gen Z. These are people that are all over the place. They are all over social media. They are more effective on social media. These are born between 1995 and 2009. And this is the youngest generation in today's workforce, even in the church. The way you treat, as a church worker, the way you attend to a Gen Z, the way you treat a Gen Z, if you use the same approach on a baby boomer, you can get a very big slap. Yes. And the way you treat a baby boomer, the approach you use for, on a baby boomer, if you use it on a Gen Z, praise the Lord. So we need to operate with these mindsets. So the age categories have different characteristics which the 21 CCW needs to upgrade themselves to be able to achieve effective communications. Communication. Can somebody help us see First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22? First Corinthians chapter 9, verse 22. First Corinthians 9, 22. To the weak, I became as weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, that I might be all means, that I might by all means save them. So, Apostle, Apostle Paul was being systematic here. He said to the weak, I became weak. He said, I became all things to all men, so that I might, by all means, do what? Win them. So, if you don't act like them, like my younger son that, that used to be missionary in the north, herself and her boss, they will dress up like Muslims and they will enter mosque. They will join a worshiping mosque just to reach out to people who were so afraid for her, but they made impact. So, you have to become all things for all men, so you'll be able to do what? Win. You'll be able to reach some. I'm rushing now. Then, another characteristics of the 21 CCW is network. Somebody say network. Network. Okay, if you read um, 1 Corinthians about 12, verse 17, I will not read it. 1 Corinthians about 12, verse 17 to 20, and then verse 25, you see that the Bible talks about the parts, different functions. So you cannot function in isolation. You have to learn to network. You have to learn to connect. We have to learn everybody is important. Every part is important. Everybody has a role to play. Everybody has something to offer. Everybody. Don't feel as a church worker that you are not important. You have to learn to network. Because on your own, you cannot achieve much. On your own, you cannot have much impact. You need to con connect with the next person to be able to actualize the dream of the 21st century church. Praise the Lord. It matters not now if you are in the security, music, choral, prayer, evangelism, or media. The church cannot achieve much much results when there's no connection, when there's no relationship between the, her members. There must be consistent interaction, that's networking. We must have a sense of responsibility for one another. Look out for one another. When you come to church, you don't see brother A or brother B. Make a call and find out how he's doing. You, you have a visitor and you don't see the visitor the next Sunday, you make the call and find out why they did not come to church. Because people love their egos to be found. People love People love to be loved. People love to be celebrated. When you celebrate people, you see that you get their attention. And most people in the world go to where they are celebrated, not where they are relegated. Praise the Lord. Then, finally, a 21st century CCW needs to be detailed. Somebody say detailed. You need to be detailed. You must be detail-oriented. Develop the ability to pay attention to minute details. You need to give, you need to have an understanding of there are things that are urgent and important. 
There are things that are urgent but not important. There are things that are not important but they are urgent. So we need to know how to prioritize. So urgent and important things, important but not urgent things, urgent but not important things. But every church worker must know that the master's work is urgent and important. So learn to put God first. Put God's work first in all that you do. Can we quickly see Ephesians? Okay, John chapter 9 verse 4. John chapter 9 verse 4. John 9 4. I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can walk. I must walk the works of him that sent me. And if you move further to Ephesians, you see that the Bible says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. So you ought to walk with a sense of urgency, with a sense of responsibility. We ought to be intentional.